So I'm looking at this remote control here today, which is a remote control for my car, and when I try and unlock it, it's having trouble. So I'll push this button here, it's the middle one, that's the unlock button, and it wouldn't always work. I'd be pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and eventually it would actually start working, so that's being a bit annoying. This is the cover that goes on it. I thought I'd start probing and have a look. I've already given it a clean, I put some IPA into the switch and worked a little bit, and I did that about a week ago. It hasn't actually improved things. So I thought I'd come back and have another look. And what we'll do is we'll just probe on the battery here. These are the battery terminals right here. So we're getting 3 volts on the battery, so the battery looks good. Push the lock button. There you go, 2.7 volts. So push the unlock button. Nothing's happening. Pushing it, pushing it. Oh, there we go. Then that time, just for a second. There you go, now it's going. So yes, I've got a problem with that button, obviously. Because the battery voltage doesn't drop. Which means the button's not working. So I've got a couple of assortments here of little buttons. So I've had a little look through these, and I don't actually have anything exactly right. I've got one which is close, I think, but it's not exactly the same. So it's the same kind of format. It's got four leads on it, four legs to put it on the board. It's about the right height, same height. So I think it's usable if it's the same electrical connections as well, so I need to check for that. Footprint-wise, it'll work. So let's just probe for connections. That side. So vertically. So that way I've got a connection. That way I've got a connection. This one. Kind of. On the legs it does. Ah. PCB connections seem a little bit weird. If I go directly on the PCB, I've got like a test point there, which goes to one leg. So that's the actual leg. Go to the pad. I've got nothing. Well, that's interesting. Let's go to the other one. Okay, I do have something there. That makes you wonder a little bit about whether there's an issue with solder pads on this thing, actually. Maybe we'll just try resoldering it first and see if that solves it. Um, also, worst case with these remotes, you often get buttons you don't tend to use, like this one here. This is like the emergency button, right? You, you push and hold that button down, it sets the alarm off. You don't tend to use that, so something you could actually do if you really needed to. You can actually just swap these two buttons around, and you know, just make the good one there. But uh, anyway, I'm going to try resoldering this now and actually just see what's going on because it doesn't seem like it's got a good connection somewhere. So let's put some flux on this. I had some leak out the tube, so I've got way too much sitting there. It's just basically freshen these pads up and see if it brings it back to life or not. Maybe it is cracked and I couldn't see the cracks. It's possible. So that side's all freshened up. See if that did anything. You see this pad here is lifted up. That's not actually a literal connection anyway, it's just there to help to stabilise it so it doesn't actually bend too much. So that's what I need to fix as well. But that's not a problem because obviously the other button was working fine. So I'll clean this flux off and then we'll try it again. Alright, let's try this again. So let's do the lock button first. Yeah, 2.8. And unlock. That is still playing up. So yeah, definitely got a switch problem. So one thing when you're working with RF gear, you have to make sure that when you do finish working on them, you can still see I've got a bit of a flux rigid there, I haven't got it all off yet, but most of it's gone. You have to be careful about getting rid of all the flux. RF gear is affected by flux sometimes. It can actually affect the tuning of circuitry and all sorts of stuff. So whenever you are working on anything which involves RF, you have to clean it thoroughly when you finish with it. Once you're sure you've finished, it has to be spotless. I've seen this firsthand where oscillators have stopped working because there's a flux on the board. It happens. And just to prove this situation, let's push onto the test pad again. There we go, still got connection there, right through now, and the same there. So the switch has definitely got connections to the board now, and it's also still playing up, so it has to be the switch. And this time I'm not battling, trying to stop the ball wobbling everywhere, put it into this PCB holder. I will be using hot air, so I'll be careful not to like, direct it towards the jaws here. But uh, it shouldn't be a problem, I'm going to be using it too hot. It's not much thermal mass here, so it should be pretty easy to get that switch off. Right, I've only got the temperatures quite low, I've got to set at 250, 60% air. So we shall see. 
how we go with that. I've already put a flux on it, don't forget, from when I was trying to touch it up, so it wouldn't need much to actually get it going. So I've got it set very low, being very gentle with this ball. I may need to turn it up, I might be doing too gentle. There we go. I think I was probably a bit too cold there. Right, we'll do it clean. Let's try and get the lime just right. If I was using hot air, it would kind of self-align itself, but um, it would self-align, I suppose. It would self-align itself, but um, I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do is try and get it to bed down nicely on each side. To get each side straight, then just hinge it down. Because I see there's a bit of solder on the board. I think that's it there. Then just redo this side again, just to make sure. should be good. And that I expect will work. That clicks nicely. These actually got like rubberized tops, actually like a rubber, which is interesting. First one I'm to set. But this is a hard plastic top so it might actually click a bit easier as well. Maybe a bit too easy. Anyway, I shall get the rest of this flux off and I'll come back and test it again. So the other thing I want to do is fix this piece here where it's basically lifted off. So electrical connections to these points here anyway, they're still there. Um, but this little tab here you can see maybe it's just lifting that needs to be sucked back down again that needs to be pushed back down and that's basically just helping to hold these fingers up the other end of the battery to get a good connection like a lever point so I could just do that quite easily it will need some more flux though not that much but we've got some probably being a big tube comes out too quick and I shall hit this with some Silver solder, and then I shall push it down. Anyway, it's down. Right, let's clean that flux off. And I'll give it a wash, and uh, we should be good then. This little ring around the outside, that's the antenna. So you definitely want to keep flux and stuff off there. Okay, let's try this again. Let's put the battery in. Probe onto the battery terminal. So I'll also clean these up a little bit just to be absolutely sure the battery terminals weren't being problematic at times. So three volts there, push the lock button, 2.7, unlock, 2.7, sweet. So that might cause problems with it pushing the button more. But I'll put it in the housing find out. So you go, it's in the housing, and that's fine. That should be good now. Excellent. That's been driving me nuts for ages. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's working fine now. It's went and tested it out, and that's working absolutely perfectly now. No problems whatsoever. So that switch has been a problem for months. So it's definitely a good idea to get some of these assortments. Uh, maybe I'll chuck some links down below or something. Maybe if you're interested, you can go and buy them from there. But yeah, switch assortments. This is why I got these, because I knew that one day I'd need to use them. And sure enough, I had the right switch. Or at least close enough. Maybe check out some other videos which are on screen right now that might interest you. And I'll catch you later. Bye.